my name is Fiona Lee Jones. I'm a pianist, composer, and educator. In this lesson, I'll teach you the proper posture and hand position while sitting at the piano. Have you ever seen a pianist really get into the music? You know, they'll contort, they'll lean forward, they'll sway from side to side. It's like they're channeling the music. They get really into the music. It can be both very beautiful but painful to watch. So with my students, I stress the importance of good posture and hand position at the piano to avoid injury such as carpal tunnel, repetitive strain injury, frozen shoulder, even hunchback. Everybody's body is a little bit different, so there will be some deviations in the information I give you, but here are some helpful tips to get you started. I have taken lessons in Alexander as well as Tubman technique. Both of these techniques encourage mindfulness and movement, alignment, and posture so that we can play tension free. So we want to be ergonomic when we're playing. We don't want to do anything that strains the body in any unnatural way or puts it in a position of being injured. So let's start by putting our feet flat on the floor. For children and people with shorter legs, you can use a footstool or a box so that the feet are in contact with the ground. So when sitting at the piano, we want the hips to actually be higher than the knees. We don't want our knees to be higher than our hips. It actually creates kind of a leaning back sensation. Also, you should feel the two sits bones flat on your piano bench. Sometimes though, if you're reaching high up to the right or to the left of the piano, you'll be using one cheek to play on. This is called one cheek playing. So I always tell my students to kind of have like a ballerina posture. When you see the, when you see the ballerinas, you know, in their position, it's their, their back is lifted, their head is kind of straight forward, and it's almost like there's a balloon kind of with a string that's lifting up at the back of their head, and it just kind of pulls everything into alignment. So I like to pretend it's a balloon with a string that's kind of pulling up the back of the neck and kind of elongating the neck. And you'll see this with a lot of ballerinas, a lot of dancers, they kind of have this really, it's a very elongated and graceful posture. So you can try doing kind of like the ballerina, kind of the, this position in, <laughs> in ballet. So we don't want to be overly stiff, you know, we don't want to like the soldier posture and we don't want to be leaning too far back in our chair because then our weight's going to be going this way. We also don't want to be leaning too far forwards, creating the hunchback. Sometimes you'll see some benches that are wedge shaped. It actually helps make the arm weight more available for the pianist. I don't personally use the wedge bench, but I have in the past. They kind of give you a leaning forwards type of feeling. It does make it easier to play, I will say that. I don't personally use them. So our chin should be level. It shouldn't be too high or too low. So when we put our hands at the piano, we actually want our forearms to be in alignment at the same level as the keyboard. So you can adjust your seat to make sure that your arms aren't reaching up to the keyboard or reaching down to the keyboard like that. So we want kind of like a 90 degree angle. And it helps to have a mirror at the side of the piano so you can actually check your posture from the side. So our hands are placed palms down and you can actually imagine or pretend, sometimes I'll get tennis balls and we'll hold them in our hands and we'll flip our hands over and watch the hand position, the curved hand shape. And you'll notice that the knuckles are actually higher than the fingers. You don't want the knuckles to be sinking down like that. You don't have much control over the keys. And this also creates tension right here in the wrist and the hand. You can also place the hands over the kneecaps to also get kind of like a mold of how your hands should be. Or even stand up and shake your hands out and just look at your hand position from the side. You'll notice that the hands are naturally, the fingers are naturally curved, they're not straight. So we want to keep, remember we want to be ergonomic at the piano, so we want to, we want to do what's natural for our body. In general, we want to play on the tips of our fingertips rather than the fleshy pads of our fingertips. So when we play on the tips of our fingertips, we actually get a, a firmer and brighter sound. When we play on the pads of our fingers, it's a little more mellow. It helps to imagine your whole body from your feet to your fingers as a unified playing mechanism. To make the entire mechanism work smoothly, it takes time, practice, and mindfulness. So now I'm going to show you a couple stretches that will help counteract any leaning forward or hunched back position. So here's a stretch that can help open up the chest and the shoulder area as well as the back. So you want to put your arms kind of uh, facing the, the door like this. And the higher you move them up, the, the more intense the stretch. So you can kind of find a spot. And you want to just lean forward like this and just kind of count to 30 and just breathe in. 
out. So hunchback is caused when these muscles shorten and it kind of pulls everything forward. So this is kind of the way to counteract that. So another stretch I also recommend is getting a yoga ball, like a giant yoga ball, and actually leaning back on it so it's like stretches and opens up this whole chest area. Um, it really helps to kind of just make this so it's not so tight. My name is Fiona Lee Jones. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.